So we're back up here again. <laughs> Been a while since I did a little motivational video up here. Or a corner video, I should say. But on today's motivational corner, this time, it's going to be of a beautiful topic. Let's just put it like that. And it's something I saw on my motivational calendar downstairs when I woke up this morning that said, if I can remember it right, the most beautiful version of you is you. That's the topic here today. It's basically just saying to be yourself because that's the best version of you. Right? You want to know who the real version of yourself is to be is just to be yourself. Especially, cause, especially if you're going through imposter syndrome or not feel like you have a purpose in life or don't know what to do with your life right now or haven't for a while, then this, hopefully this um, topic will help you, kind of give you a feeling that you can just be yourself. And a lot of us, I'm not saying all of us have been taught this or told this when we were younger, but most of us, I'm sure, were probably taught to be ourselves. So we were told to be ourselves and those Ones that like us for us will come by with us and the rest of them, well, they just never cared <clears throat> and weren't real friends or real people. And yeah, <clears throat> that makes a lot of sense when you think about it. When you're your real self and the people that actually do care about you for who you are, are the only ones that actually keep in contact with you and even want to hear from you. That proves that, well, you're just being who you are. And it's hard for a lot of people to try to be at, out of their comfort zone to feel confident and proud and comfortable with who they are in the beginning. But once you get out of that system and just feel yourself, be yourself around everything and everyone, it just feels so much more relieving. <clears throat> and the ones that don't like you for who you are, they probably wouldn't really like you to begin with. So I feel like that's probably the lesson I'm still learning even now. So that's one of the things I've always had a problem with for years of just trying to blend in with people. So I tried doing being myself and just no one really notices or cares or only want me around for something or whatever. <clears throat> Don't even notice my existence. <clears throat> but I guess that proves that I didn't have the right kind of friends for the most part. I was always hanging around the hot, hot people, really specifically more the hot girls. Because I was a ladies man back then, and I still technically am one, but it's kind of not necessarily toned down, but it doesn't feel as worth it now because everyone I know is basically married or about to be married or have kids or about to have kids. And. A ladies man or player like me can't really do much when everyone is pretty much taken. But that, in, in a way, it didn't really feel like who I really am, which I am kind of a ladies man, but I'm not one in a traditional sense. And yeah, I like me around a lot of gorgeous girls, but I don't want to really do much with them, like most people would think as a player. But anyway, I just want to just hang out with them. Talk with them, you know, learn about them, be like a real friend. But they probably would think as being a player, that that's just that how it works. But I'm not like that. I'm not like that. And that's not who I really am. You'd think I would have imposter syndrome from that, but it wasn't really too off. I guess because I just like being around the gorgeous girls and 
That was all that really mattered. And the girls were hanging out with me in the school, but none of them ever hung out with me outside of it. But that's the thing about being an only child and one who is not used to really being around a bunch of people outside of wherever I see them at. It'd be rare if I see anyone I know when I was in school somewhere at like a Walmart or something. If I did, they would only want to talk for like five seconds and then get back to their thing. If I was lucky. But it wasn't always like that. So I saw a couple of my friends at Walmart when I was in Kernersville. I didn't live in Kernersville, but I was going to Kernersville a lot more often. Place in North Carolina. If you're from North Carolina, you know what I'm talking about. But that's where I'm from. <laughs> but I saw uh, one or two of my friends there. They actually wanted to talk to me for a little while and get some selfies and all that. Which proves what kind of friends they are compared to the ones that weren't like that and just wanted to get away from me for some reason. You know, uh, I'm just trying to have a friendly conversation and you know, hang out and do all the fun friend stuff, but they don't want to do none of that with me. At least not back then. And probably, I bet you they still wouldn't now. But at least this time they would have a reason for it because you know they're married or about to be married or their business is booming and all that. And, or with their kids or their friends' kids. See, back then, the, they had what I had now. Nothing. Of, nothing of that. But, yeah, I still don't have none of that stuff. And look how much happier I am. <laughs> but I think that was kind of like the curse, of, in a way, of just seeing all my friends do well when I saw them all the time in school. And it's still kind of a curse when I go on my social media, but it's not as big of a curse as it was three or four years ago. Because I don't stay on there that often. And I'm just happy for them. Which I would have been happy for him anyway, even if I didn't feel like I was cursed to feel like I should be doing something with my life. But as far as, you know, with having all the stuff on my friends got and going to places and being with all their friends and all that. But that's just me wishing to have something that would never, ever happen. And if anything, it probably would have turned me into a different person. Which is kind of going backwards from the topic of this video here, which is to be your most beautiful version of yourself, which is just being yourself. I wouldn't have felt like that eventually. Because I wouldn't have been used to it. I'm not used to none of my friends hanging out with me for longer than 10 seconds. Because at that point, I'm expecting them to run away from me. As I check my non-existent watch. But they they would back back in school, not just high school, school. They wouldn't even notice me or run away from me. And the ones I didn't have that much of a crush on were the ones that had a crush on me. Those ones were pretty, but the ones I was in love with were the super hot ones. But those are the ones that it's just like ones you would see on TV kind of ones. Ones you know you'll never ever get a chance with. Of even seeing for like 10 seconds. Kind of ones. But. I'm kind of glad for that. In retrospect. Because. Let them do their thing. And I'm sure there's a lot of things I don't know about them. That I'm kind of glad for. Because they probably could be. Way too much for me. But. If anything. The way things are now is so much better. Cause let's be real. I'm sure I may be the only one to say this, but maybe not nowadays. It feels good to be single and alone. Yeah, it has its disadvantages of being lonely and dull and no one to really talk to. But I'm an only child. That's how it's been since I've been born. As far as people around my age or friends or anything, none of them ever want to hang out with me 
at any point for any reason. So I'm pretty much used to that. If anything, this kind of gives me, you know, experience and practice of how it's going to feel in like 30 years from now when all I'm going to have is me. <clears throat> so this is giving me kind of like the feels of how it will feel to be alone for when I'm eventually all alone altogether, which I usually am anyway in terms of around people my age. I'm not used I'm, I'm I don't see no one I know my age hanging out with me, talking with me. It's never happened. There wasn't Family members, yeah, I'm talking about from a friendship, one day, it's no relation of any family of any sort kind of ones. That has never happened to me before, in part, as far as outside of school and in, like, whatever house I'm living in. I never went to anyone else's house because I don't know where no one lives. Even if I did, I wouldn't know how to get there because I barely know how to get through around here in Winston-Salem. You know, I don't drive, but even if I did, I'd be very confused. So I don't know where I'm going. I'm not like my dad, because he's a truck driver, so, and he loves to drive anyway. He knows where everything is, or where most things are anyway, more than I would. So, that's why, I'm, that's why I don't, that's, I guess that's another reason why I don't drive. Even if I knew what I was doing and driving all that, I wouldn't know where I'm going. And I would be a nervous wreck. I most likely would be, you know. I bet you right now, if I ever got my driver's license, the first day I get it, it's going to be my first wreck. And probably be my last will and testament. I haven't even made a will yet. But. But still. <laughs> That's just how it goes, I guess. But at least I'm being honest, which is another part about me that is being myself. There's one thing anyone should know about me is that I am going to always be honest. It's, again, that's just how I am. <laughs> just being myself. So there's a lot of things a lot of my friends probably don't know about me. But if they knew me well enough, they would know. But if they don't, well, which most of them don't because they don't even want to hang out with me for longer than five seconds, if that, when I saw them all the time. And since I'll never see none of them again for another 50, 100 years, they'll never know. And they don't watch my motivational videos here on YouTube and just, you know, talk to me for longer than a few seconds. Just like give me like five or so minutes of their time, if they wanted to, if they cared enough to, they probably could learn some things about me. But that also, especially if they end up asking, but they would also probably have asked for it. But I'm gonna let them know. I ain't got no shame, not no more. I used to, when I was opening up about my foot stuff, which I already had posted my foot fetish story on my social medias. It's still on my Snapchat, but that's for my friends to see. Because they're the ones that <laughs> I I put, I gave it to. I, I, those are the ones I wanted to know about it, but if they don't see it or do nothing about it, then that's on them. <laughs> but, now I'm going to put that story up on my YouTube channel whenever it gets warm. Or stays warm. But probably about a month or two from now, I'll probably do that store that post in a video form. If I can remember what it said. <laughs> but but that'll be then. So again, a reason to subscribe. <laughs> yeah, speaking of warm, I think it's the first motivational corn video on my YouTube channel that I'm in shorts. Short sleeves. And of course, the classic. <laughs> classic barefootness. But, um, uh, trying to think of what else I can add. There isn't much else here I could add. I'm on here for four, almost 15 minutes. I figured I was on here for 20. But, I guess I want to wrap it up here at this point, but 
I feel like I want to add one last thing, but I just can't think of it. I guess I'll just say to just be yourself. And the ones that don't like you for you, well, they, they could suck it. That's, that's all I'll say. <laughs> but, yeah. Y'all you know, do the YouTube stuff of liking, sharing, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I got almost 700 subscribers on my YouTube channel. So, I thank, I thank you for that. It was mostly from the shorts <laughs> that I posted with, you know, the... Now it's been more Mario Party stuff from my Switch Online. Been making clips of those and making them into YouTube shorts. So, I've been getting more video views from that than I do on my motivational corners, but... I also don't make these videos as, like, the main crux of the channel. I could, but they probably wouldn't get as many views as the other stuff. But this channel's focused just on a variety of stuff that I like and or love and just want to post. It's my channel, so. <laughs> but. Now this is 60 by 9. The video here, hopefully it'll let me put all the annotation stuff and the extra stuff that most YouTubers have at the end of their videos. So. There should be a thing up here to look at my whole playlist of motivational corner videos. Hopefully somewhere in here will be the circle to look at my channel and subscribe. And whatever else. Or just check the videos out. And uh, somewhere in one of these areas there should be one the previous video of my motivational corner. Another one will probably be one of those shorts. That I just posted on probably the one, probably the most recent short, or a random short from my YouTube thing. Do the monkey boy, <laughs> but yeah. And I gotta think of a way to end these one day. Hopefully, someone can give me like a comment below on what I can say to wrap it up. So I never know what to say at the end of these. I never know what to say at the beginning of them either. Well, I actually do just uh, today on the corner, so I'm getting that. But the outro I need work on. But Yeah. <laughs>